What up, y'all? This is your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report for Friday, May 8th, 2015, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook or on Twitter, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. Or on Twitter, at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com and search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady has made his first public appearance following the damning Wells report over the deflate gate scandal. On Thursday afternoon, Brady arrived by helicopter to Salem State University in Massachusetts, 50 miles north of Boston, for a scheduled interview with broadcaster Jim Gray in front of a sold-out crowd of 4,000 people. New England's Patriot quarterback said, I don't really have any reaction yet to the report. Our owner commented it yesterday, it has only been 30 hours and I haven't had time to digest it fully, but when I do, I will be sure to let you know how I feel about it. um, He said that after being welcomed with a standing ovation and roars of cheers from the audience chanting of MVP. Gray asked when he would speak on the topic publicly, and Brady replied, hopefully soon. There is still a process going forth, and I am involved in that process. Whenever it happens, it happens. I certainly want to be very comfortable in how I feel about the statements that I make. The Wells report, which stated Brady was at least, quote, generally aware that teams' employees deflated footballs before le- below legal league standards before the Patriots' NFC championship game against the Indianapolis Colts in January, has sparked the media circus with many sports fans brandishing Brady as a liar and a cheat. However, he definitely had a home field advantage at Thursday's event. Sportscaster Gray said at the outs of the interview, this is like a Patriots pep rally. Looks like you picked a friendly place to reappear. However, there is an elephant in the room. Brady went on to say, I accept my role and responsibility of being a public figure. You take the good and the bad. We'll get through it, and we'll deal with this at a later time. This isn't what this night is meant to be about. Has the scandal detracted from the Patriots' Super Bowl 49 win? No, absolutely not, he replied, saying they've earned that achievement. He also went to add, I certainly care what the people close to me think. You learn that not everyone is going to like you. There are people that are not going to like Tom Brady. I'm okay with that. He also said, as the conversation swiftly moved from the scandal to the topic of of Brady recently jumping off a cliff while on vacation with his family, he said, I have teammates that I love and who love and support me. The four-time Super Bowl champion has been lambasted in the public arena after he denied allegations in January, insisting that the following initial inspection before an NFL game, he doesn't, quote, want anyone touching those balls after that. I don't want anyone rubbing them, he said. To me, those balls are perfect. Investigator Tom Wells said in a controversial report released Wednesday that two Patriot officials, Jim McNally and John Jermensky, quote, participated in a deliberate effort to release air from Patriots game balls. The report also stated that Brady likely knew of the plan. Um, The report reads, based on the evidence, it is also our view that it's most probable than not that Tom Brady was at least generally aware of the inappropriate activities of McNally and Jemretsky involving the release of air from Patriots game balls. On Thursday morning, Brady's agent Don Yee called it, quote, a sad day for the league and and dubbed Wells' findings, quote, a, a significant and terrible disappointment. In a related story, New Jersey governor and possible Republican presidential candidate Chris Christie has come to the defense of the New England Patriots quarterback in light of the damning Deflategate report. Christie said, I think it's way, way overblown. I think there's a little too much attention on this. I don't think anybody's trying to say that Tom Brady won four Super Bowls or become a future Hall of Famer because the balls were a little uninflated. He also went to add, I think the media and others love for somebody who's married to a beautiful model who's richer than you can imagine and who is a future Hall of Famer to take a couple of shots at him. Chrissy admitted uh, and admitted Dallas Cowboy fans said in an interview with IJ Review, people like that every once, people like that come every once in a while. The report was released on Wednesday, concluded that, quote, it is more probable than not that Tom Brady knew that the balls his teams were using were inflated. John Stewart has seen it all in all 16 years, but the deflated ball scandal surrounding Tom Brady and the Patriots is unprecedented, the Daily Show host said Thursday. Stewart said he's fucking, he fucking knew, recounting the evidence revealed in the Wells report that showed damning text messages that seemed to show Tom Brady knew his game footballs were deflated before the Patriots-Colts AFC championship game in January. 
A story rallied. One of the guys in the locker room at the behest of Tom Brady called himself the deflator. What was the other guy's nickname? Joey cheats at football. He then mocked Brady's team, Rob Garansky, who taped the video pouring cold water on Deflategate, where he shows his muscles as an exhibit of something inflated, adding the only thing he he has to the only thing he has to say. I gotta say I love this guy, Stewart said about Gronowski, but Brady, no, Tommy, you're a cheating fucker, he said. On Thursday night, Brady appeared at a charity event where he said he hasn't read the full Wells report and had no real comment on it. ESPN is cutting ties with massive media draw Bill Simmons, electing on Friday not to renew his contract. ESPN President John Skipper said in a statement provided to the rap, I decided today that we are not going to renew Bill Simmons' contract. We've been in negotiations, and it was clear it was time to move on. He continued, ESPN's relationship with Bill has been mutually beneficial. He's produced great content for us for many years, and ESPN has provided him many new opportunities to spread his wings. Skipper concluded, we wish Bill continued success as he plans his next chapter. ESPN remains committed to Grantland, and we have a strong place, a strong team in place. Uh, on Skipper's Grantland point, it's important to point out that ESPN owns the sport and pop culture website, not Boss Simmons. As such, it appears that the website will continue on without any Simmons affiliation, though that decision is officially still to be determined. As Skipper told the New York Times, it's not long ago when uh, went from being a Bill Simmons site to one that can stand on its own. Simmons, while a huge draw over the years at ESPN, have become somewhat of a thorn in the Disney company's side lately. He has criticized members of his company on a number of occasions, and at times dared his bosses to retaliate over other inflammatory statements. Self-proclaimed sports guy tussled with ESPN radio host Mike and Mike in late fall, mere weeks after he was suspended for a profanity-laced podcast tirade amid at NFL Commissioner Roger Goodell. On the first issue, Simmons called Mike Golick and Mike Greenberg's radio and TV show absolute garbage and tweeted about the Mike and Mike in the morning. I would say I lost respect for that show, but I never had. The duo was a little bit guilty of taking a Simmons quote on LeBron James returning to Cleveland slightly out of contents. Mike and Mike punted the blame to whoever cut the audio clip for them. The criticism for the, of the NFL boss was over the league's mishandling of Ray Rice's domestic violence incident. Simmons said in a podcast at the time, it was just not enough is being made out of the fact that they knew about the tape and they knew what was on it. Goodell, if he didn't, if he didn't know what was on that tape, he's a liar. I'm just saying it. He is lying. I think that dude is lying. If you put him up on a lie detector test, that guy would fail. He also added, for all those people to pretend they don't know is such fucking bullshit. It is, it is such fucking bullshit. And for him to go in that press conference and pretend otherwise. I was so insulted. I really was. Earlier in 2014, in a very separate issue, Simmons received some harsh criticism for a Grantland piece that outletted a transgender golf club inventor who later committed suicide. While he did not write it, the editor published a lengthy apology, explained the process, and shouldering the blame for the publishing decision. A guest editorial from transgender sports writer Christina Carral was published the same day, and Simmons was quite open and accepting of criticism. Simmons has yet to respond publicly to Friday's announcement. ABC has canceled freshman comedy Cristela and Drama Forever as well as Resurrection after its second season. The Friday comedy Cristela, which stars comedian Cristela Alonzo, follows a young Mexican-American woman as she works to become an attorney while juggling her responsibilities to her traditional family. Forever, starring um, Owen Gruffudd, as an immortal detective saw a steady ratings decline in its Tuesday night time slot. Resurrection, a zombie-themed drama about residents of a small town coming back to life, sometimes decades after they died, aired for two seasons. But recently, but recently hit series lows in ratings, much like the also recently canceled Revenge. The cancellation news comes amid a fury of renewals for shows like Scandal, Grey's Anatomy, Fresh Off the Boat, and Blackish. Meanwhile... Agent Carter fans, it might have been a nail-biter, but the ABC series will be back for a second season. The, the network has renewed the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and the slew of renewals that also include Nashville, the freshman comedy Fresh Off the Boat, and Secret and Lies starring Ryan Phillippe and Juliette Lewis. The renewals come on the heels of a number of series orders from ABC on Thursday, including the Shonda, the Shonda Rhimes drama The Catch and the comedy The Muppets.
Graves and Amy could use a little more Dr. McDreamy or at least his deaf storyline on ABC Airwaves. The Shonda Rhimes medical drama dropped 15% on Thursday versus last week when it had already slipped back down to earth a bit from the prior week shocking episode's gaudy numbers. As a result, CBS managed to tie ABC atop the key ratings demo. CBS also took first place in totals thanks to in large part to the Big Bang Theory's season finale. CBS and ABC tied for first in ratings, both with 1.8 rating out of six shares in the advertisers' coveted 18-49 to 49 demographic. CBS was first in total viewers with an average of 8.4 million, according to preliminary numbers. ABC was second with $6.5 million. Uh, 6.5 million. For CBS, The Big Bang Theory at 8 p.m. scored primetime best of a 3.5 out of 14 and 14.3 million viewers. The Odd Couple at 8.30 dipped from last week's demo to a 1.8 out of 7 and 8.5 million viewers. A special second episode at 9 fell further to a 1.5 out of 5 and 7 million viewers. Following a rerun at 9.30, Elementary had at 10 had a 1.1 out of 4 and 6.9 million viewers. For ABC, Gray at 8 received a 2.2 out of 8 and 7.9 million viewers. Scandal at 9 got a 2.2 out of 7 and 7.4 million viewers. American Crime at 10 posted a 1 out of 3 and 4.3 million viewers. Fox was third in ratings with a 1.1 out of 4 and fourth in viewers with 4.5 million. Bones at 8 had 1.1 out of 4 and 4.7 million viewers. A, spe a special second episode at 9 had the same demo ratings but lost about 300,000 viewers. Although ABC renewed uh, Secret and Lies for a second season, uh, lead actor Brian Phillippe is not returning for season 2 of the ABC hit series, despite what one has read. When ABC picked up the series for a sophomore year late Thursday, the internet was flooded with congratulatory Twitter messages to Philippi from viewers. Several entertainment news outlets assumed Philippi was returning with one side, even touting the second season as, quote, a score for him. But the 40-year-old actor turned out some stellar performances on Secret and Lies, which were arguably some of his best work as a leading man. But the actor began telling fans nearly a week ago that if the limited-run series returns, it would not be his character Ben Crawford's story that the new season revolved around. Clearly not everyone across social media was listening. Therefore, Philippi tried again Friday morning to clear up the incorrect news reports and buzz across social media. The actor start, uh, started, I'm so happy and excited for all involvement that Secret and Lies will return for another season. Congrats to Juliet, Barbie, Kligman, Aaron Ka Kaplan, and the writers. He continued, since there sim seems to be confusion, the first season was about a man accused his um, his family and how he ultimately sacrifices himself for them. That story has been told to completion this season, as was always the intent. Secret and Lies is a remake of an original Australian series of the same name, which centers around a detective tracking a new murder each season. Philippi knowingly signed on for the gig as a one and done deal. A show insider also told the rap that the plans was always for Philippi and others to depart after the initial ten episode run. Season, uh, Secret and Lies Season 2 will bring on an entirely new cast other than bringing Julia Lewis back as Detective Cornell. After last Sunday's shocking finale, which reveals Tom Murphy's killer in the season-long murder mystery, ABC's online companion series Cornell Confidential tied up the story further to presu presumably explain, explain the absence of Philippi's character when the show returns. But understandably, it doesn't mean fans of the series are happy with the news since Philippi was the main draw of the show. Ant-Man, The Vision, and Hawkeye are among the Avengers also taking sides in the battle between Captain America and Iron Man in Captain America Civil War. With Paul Rudd, Paul Bentley, and Jeremy Renner confirmed as cast members by Marvel Studios Thursday. The threequel to Captain America The Winter Soldier has begun filming in Atlanta, and the studio announced the full cast, which reads more like another Avengers film than a solo outing for Chris Evans as Steve Rogers. Also joining Evans and Robert Downey Jr. are Scarlett Johansson as Natasha Romanoff, Black Widow, Sebastian Stan as Bucky Barnes, Winter Soldier, Anthony Mackie as Sam Wilson, Falcon, Don Cheetah as Jim Rhodes, War Machine, and Elizabeth Olsen as Wanda Maximoff, or the Scarlet Witch. Additional actors appearing in the film include Chadwick Bosman as T'Challa, or Black Panther, Emily Van Camp as Sharon Carter, Agent 13. Daniel Brühl as the villain is Baron Zemo, Frank Grillo as Brock Rumlin or Crossbows, William Hurt as General Thetis Thunderbolt Ross, and 
Martin Friedman in an unspecific role. Directed by, directed by Joe and Anthony Russo, Captain America's Civil War will be released on May 6, 2016. Pam Geller, the controversial organizer of the Muhammad cartoon contest that got shot up by two gunmen on Sunday, was taken to task Fox News Thursday by contributor Juan Williams. Um, Williams said, if we want to have a serious conversation here about Ms. Geller, she's like a pyromaniac who goes before the judge and says, oh yeah, we're setting those fires to see how fast the fire department can respond. Sean Hannity wasn't having this and said Williams was blaming the victim, Geller, instead of the terrorist who shot up the event before, killing, before being killed by security. Williams said Pam Geller was doing nothing but trying to intentionally trying to provoke this reaction. Geller, the president of the American Freedom Defense Initiative, who wrote a Time column Wednesday titled, This is a War, put blame on the media. Geller shot back, is the media that has created these myths about me? Why hasn't the media questioned the motives behind the jihadists? Uh, William shot back when Geller talked over him. I think you're about self-promotion, Pam Geller. Geller concluded Williams is enforcing Sharia law. E! Network released the first promo of its two-part episode of Keeping Up with the Kardashians on Bruce Jenner's transition into womanhood. The one-minute video features home videos of Bruce and his family while they describe their thoughts on his transition in voiceover. Kendra Jenner said tearfully at one point, I just don't like when people say Bruce is going to be gone. I'm not going anywhere. Bruce responds, I'm not going anywhere. Bruce's other daughter, Kylie Jenner, says she's ready to meet the female version of her father, quote, when he's ready. She then adds, when we're both ready. Bruce says, I don't think I'll ever been as scared in my life as I was to be extraordinary, on, extraordinarily honest with my kids. The two-part episode will air May 18th and 19th at 9 p.m. on the E! channel. Jenner identified himself as a transgender in an interview with Diane Sawyer. The interview was an incredible ratings success, drawing 16.9 million viewers. Shortly after the interview aired, E! announced that they will air a documentary series about Jenner's transition starting in July. David Letterman's final week on The Late Show has better be had better be awesome because his second to last week is pretty stacked guest wise. On Tuesday, President Bill Clinton will make his 10th appearance on the CBS late night sh talk show. Joining the former commander in chief next week will be Howard Stern and Don Rickles on Monday, Adam Sandler Tuesday with Clinton, Julia Roberts and music guest Ryan Adams Wednesday, George Clooney and musical guest Tom Waits Thursday, and Oprah Winfrey with the stand up comedy set by Norm MacDonald to close out the week Friday. Additionally, uh, late night music director and band leader Paul Schaefer will join Letterman for a special interview on Wednesday's show. Guests for Letterman's final three broadcasts, May 18th to the 20th, will be announced next week. As for the former holder of the nation's top office, a potential future first gentleman, Clinton will discuss his work with the Clinton Foundation, whose mission is to promote global health and wellness, increasing opportunities for women and girls, reducing childhood obesity, creating the economic opportunity, and helping communities address the effects of the climate change. President Clinton last appeared on The Late Show on September 23, 2013. He made his first visit to the broadcast nearly 13 years ago on September 11, 2002, the one-year anniversary of 9-11. In a related story, Tina Fey only wears a fancy dress out of respect for David Letterman, and since he's retiring, she unzipped Thursday. Fey told Letterman, it's very hard work. I don't know if you're aware of the contraptions under here. It's almost uh, medical. She said about Jimmy Fallon, what am I going to do, put on a dress for Jimmy? That's creepy. He's like my brother. James Corden won't get the dress either. I'm, I'm going to wear like a special underwear for James Corden. That's not going to happen. Faye then got down, down to it and revealed a, quote, uh, hashtag last dress undergarment that said, bye, Dave. A flabbergasted letterman responded, I don't know what to say. Oh, for heaven's sakes. Jimmy Kimmel will not air a new episode of Jimmy Kimmel Live on May 20th in respect full effort to make sure as many late night viewers eye as possible on David Letterman's during his final episode, farewell episode of The Late Show. Uh, Kimmel said in an email to the New York Times, I have too much respect for Dave to do anything that would distract viewers from watching this final show. Plus, I'll be, be crying all day, which makes it hard to work. ABC confirmed that all other episodes of Kimmel's show that week will be new. Meanwhile, The Tonight Show starring Jimmy Fallon on NBC and Conan on TBS will be new on May 20th. Reps for both shows have said, while both The Daily Show and The Nightly Show with Larry Wilmore will be in repeats for that entire week. 
Letterman is leaving the Late Show after 33 years and over 6,000 episodes. President Obama and First Lady Michelle have already stopped by the CBS set to say their farewells. Letterman is set to interview George Clooney, Oprah Winfrey, Tom Hanks, and Bill Clinton before he signs off the airways. Stephen Colbert will be taking over hosting duties in September. And finally, new images from Quentin Tarantino's upcoming Western The Hateful Eight show Kurt, Doug, excuse me, Kurt Russell and Samuel L. Jackson facing off in what appears to be a very tense moment. The photo features bounty hunter John the Hangman Roof, played by Russell, aiming a rifle at Major Marquise Warren, played by Samuel L. Jackson, where it releases part of the newest issue of Entertainment Weekly, which hits newsstands today. The cover released Thursday was the first Tarantino fans um, had seen of the cast in costume. The film follows eight gunslingers in the Old West who get trapped in a cabin together with the fierce blizzard hits. In addition to Russell and Jackson, the film also stars Michael Madsen, Jennifer Jason Lee, Bruce Dern, Tim Roth, um, Dem um, Demian Belchier, and Walton Goggins. Another photo which offers the first look at Oscar nominee Dern in character suggests there will be singing involved and Dern's character won't like it. Tarantino almost scrapped the project altogether after the script leaked online. However, he could reconsider after a live table read where the cast got an overwhelmingly positive reception. And that is your entertainment report for Friday, May 8th, 2015. I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook or on Twitter, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. Or on Twitter at the enter report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report on iHeartRadio. Just search for iHeart.com online and search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to our page. Happy Mother's Day weekend to everyone. I'll see you again Monday. Bye.